Hey guys, how's it going? Um, I hope this is taping right. I'm not really sure. Anyway, I thought that we can start our study with learning about relationships, seeing as that's just like a really big focus now that we're home, maybe to take our minds off of the virus and worry about how we're interacting with our mom, our dad, our siblings, whoever else might be captured at our home. And so I forget the trying to figure out this Snapchat thing. I haven't done it in a while. I forgot who I was reading with to help me with this, but I'll get the guy's name and make sure he gets credit. So this is not all me. Um, so a few questions to ask yourself is, are you struggling with relation conflicts in your house right now? Right? Let's, can we all just like raise our hand here? <laughs> Cause sometimes so sometimes we understand that it's kind of hard to find the words that we want to say. And the truth is we have an enemy and it's not each other. It's Satan's influence on you and the person that is offending you. That's the real culprit here. So true fellowship, it's not superficial and it's not like surface level chit chat. Like, hey, how are you? Oh my God, I love you. I miss you. No, it's like a genuine heart to heart just a sharing from your gut that you all have with this person and so that comes with well we're going to learn how to maybe build that relationship right so it happens when people really get honest about who they are and what's happening in their lives right so you have to find that safe person and you kind of like share your hurts you confess your failures your doubts you admit your doubts you acknowledge weak you acknowledge weaknesses and you ask for help and prayer. So only when you open up can you experience true fellowship. And it's not easy, right? You think about the times where you really want to open up to somebody. It's on the tip of your tongue and you can't tell them. And why is that? Because we all have our baggage. We have all of our trust issues because we shared with someone who was not trustworthy, was not a believer. And so they deceived us. And so now we are full of fear and anxiety. And we're like, we just can't get close to another person. We, it, you know, because getting to the root of it is we're fear. We have a fear now of being rejected, manipulated, vulnerable, we're hurt, or we feel used. And all of these fears, they cause us to just, we're afraid. So we don't let people know what we're really like. If they see behind our mask, they'll see the truth. And if they don't like it, we're going to end up feeling hurt and rejected. So sometimes we pretend to be someone that we're not. You know, we act like chameleons. Like I'm going to be this way with this bunch of friends. And I'm going to be this way with that bunch of friends. Or we have to walk on eggshells with certain family members. And it's, it's hard because you can't be yourself. So fear does three terrible things to us. It makes us defensive. It keeps us distant. And fear kind of makes us demanding, right? We want to control everything. We got to have the last word. We have to dominate this conversation. Um, all my competitive people know what I'm talking about. Timothy, 2 Timothy 1 7 says, The Holy Spirit, God's gift, does not want you to be, um, but to be wise and strong and to love them and enjoy being with them. So God gave us a spirit not of fear, but power, love, and self control. So we want to be close to people, yet we're afraid to get close. So what do we do, right? So maybe. You're asking yourself that question and maybe you should let your focus be more on the other person and not yourself. I think as teenagers and even me, I'm guilty of this too. Like we tend to be so self-centered. It's just all about us. You know, when the person is talking about their aching knee, all we can think about is our aching knee. So, um, where am I? Blah, blah, blah. So, if you think about that other person and not yourself, you're not thinking about maybe what that other person is thinking about. Okay, I'm back. So 
Your identity and self-worth is found in God, not people. So what do you think God sees when he looks at you? Ask him to show you, even in this week, how much he loves you. And value your relationship that you have with God. And think that, you know what, he's got that relationship with everybody around you too. Not as strong, some as weak. Um, some are strained, but it's there. So we're going to focus then on being, um, thinking about others, right? Because we know that when we think about ourselves, it's selfish and selfishness ruins relationship. It's actually the number one cause of conflict, arguments, divorce, even war. It's just not thinking of others. So James 4.1. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? So every trouble starts because of our self-centeredness. We need to be selfless. So it's less of me, more of you. Putting someone else's need above our own. And if you start acting selfless in a relationship, it almost forces that other person to change. Once the other person has to change because they're going to see that you're not the same person anymore and they're going to have to relate differently to you. And it's not going to happen overnight. It takes a lot of prayer and a lot of time and a lot of work. And some of, some of the most unlovable people are transformed when someone is kind and selfless so let me repeat that. Most, some of the most unlovable people are transformed when someone is kind and selfless towards them, when they're given what they need, not what they deserve. They say it all the time, kill them with kindness. Do it. Galatians 6, 7, 8 says, the person who plants selfishness, ignoring the needs of others, ignoring God, harvests a crop of weeds. All he'll have to show for his life is weeds. But the one who plants and responds to God, letting God's spirit do the growth work in him, harvests a crop of real eternal life. So moving on. So what's the hardest thing for you to give to someone else? Right? Practice giving that away. And it doesn't have to be like a physical thing like, oh my gosh, I have to share my last popsicle with that dude. No, it's a deeper giving of yourself. And so... I know I seem to be rushing through this, right? I'm just trying to kind of get it done for Sila. <laughs> so I apologize. So we're going to move on. Um, listening is the most important skill in a relationship. There's a big difference between hearing and listening. So I know you guys get it all the time. I know it's already going in your head about the two differences. So hearing, you get focused on the words and you miss the emotion. It's like when someone, you ask someone how they're doing and it's like, I'm fine. I know you've all heard your mama say it, and I know you guys have said it. So listening is when you hear what the person isn't saying. Listening is when you hear what the, what the person isn't saying. It's called empathy, to put yourself in another's shoes, to learn their point of view. And say... And if you need to know what to ask yourself when that's happening, you'll be like, hey, how would I feel in that situation? And you don't always have to fix the problem. Like I think personally, that's my downfall is I want to fix everything, even though I am an empathizer. A part of me just wants to fix stuff. And sometimes people just want me to shut up and listen. Humility. How do we grow in humility? It happens by letting Jesus Christ begin to control your thoughts, heart, attitude, and reactions. Ephesians 4, 23, 24 says, let the spirit change your way of thinking and make you into a new person. So the, I feel like I'm really rushing through this. I'm sorry, guys. Okay. I'm just pretty much hitting up the topics really fast. <laughs> and if you need to take notes, you might have to rewind boop, 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 and come again. All right, so, okay, let the spirit change, what is this? Oops. 
let the spirit change your way of thinking and make you into a new person. Gotcha. So how do you become a new person? How do you start to think differently, right? We've been thinking this way like all our lives. How do we just change overnight? Um, the basic law of relationship is this. You tend to become like the people that you spend time with. So if you're hanging out with some grumpy people, you're going to get grumpy. If you spend time with happy people, you're going to be happy. That's like an easy one that you guys probably Okay, so that's definitely an easy one that you guys already know. If you're wondering why it's cutting in and out, it's because uh, Snapchat is limiting my speech. Anyway. Okay, so moving on. Safe person. We talked about that before, all right? That's, um, do you have a safe person? Are you a safe person? Would your friends describe you as a safe person? Can you be a safe person? You know, can someone share with you and not have to worry about you gossiping their business all over the place? We as Christian sisters in Christ, especially in the youth group growing up together, we should really be true to each other and not just on Sunday mornings and Sunday evenings or Wednesdays. We should be true to each other in school. You know, don't pass me by the holler like you don't know my innermost thoughts and we show a different side of ourselves with our Christian sisters than we do with our worldly people. And so I feel like sometimes maybe we, so might we be taking our Christian sisters and brothers for granted? Um, okay. So do you have a bad relationship with somebody? Pray for them. Pray that they will grow in love. Pray that they'll make wise choices. Pray that they will become more like Jesus. And while you're there, you can pray for yourself because you ain't perfect. We all got a big old log in our eyes. And just so you know, criticizing does not help a person to grow because you're focusing on what you don't want rather than what you want. And comparing doesn't help either because we all know that we are unique and no one is going to be like us. So we have to think, how can I build up the people in my life? So you can have an attitude of gratitude. So here's your challenge, right? The longer you know someone, the, long, the more likely you're going to take advantage of them and, and take them for granted because it's easier to fo focus on that person's faults than it is um, and their bad times rather than the happy times. I know I feel like I do that all the time and I want to pray for a better heart where I'm not always focused on the negatives of a person because <sighs> there's a balance, you know, and I feel like there's just good and bad to each person. And sometimes it's like the, the bad has to outweigh the good. Oh, I'm sorry. The good has to outweigh the bad. And so um, as long as the bad isn't like super bad. Okay. So... In the end, the struggle in relationships can be used by God to make you stronger and more capable in your relationships. If you're humble enough to receive from him in the quiet what he wants to teach you through this, you can rest assured with whatever the outcome is. When you're in the heat of the moment and you're having, you're having arguments with your families and your siblings and things aren't going well, it's okay to go to your room and take a breath and be quiet. And, and just focus on your breathing and and think, what would, what would God want to hear from me right now? What would Jesus do if he was right in my room? What would he say? Or like reach out to someone and be like, oh, you need another perspective. Like I blew up because of this. And don't call your friend who's always going to agree with you. We know we don't, we like that friend sometimes, but that friend ain't always going to help us grow. Um, all right, so there's that. Now, James 4, 4 says, don't you realize the friendship with this world makes an enemy of God? I say it again, that if your aim is to enjoy this world, you can't be a friend of God. So there's no way to please God and non-Christians at the same time. So that's the part. I think that part was supposed to be in the beginning where we are not to be chameleons. You know, we don't hang with a certain group and change the way we are for that group and then another group and change again. Um, I'm going to end with Ephesians 6, 12 for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. 
Sorry, I hear the fire engines going. Um, I just want to pray with you guys and just um, just pray for healing for those who have this virus and just pray that the doctors will find a cure and pray for those families who have lost loved ones. And I just pray that our political leaders make good decisions for us and that we don't fall into like an economic depression and we don't lose our rights as Americans in this country. And I pray for us. I miss our friendships so much. Um, I miss you guys and uh, hope to be out of this soon and back to doing what it is that we usually do and playing games, all the things that, you know, we literally just took for granted. And yes, these are our first world problems. And I bet the people in third world countries, this is their norm to them. I mean, besides the kids that are going to Haven of Hope, that school has shut down. And so uh, I am hoping that those kids are getting fed. And uh, yeah, a lot of kids are in abusive homes and I pray for them too. And all the people that have to work. So, I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed. Bye.